Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. This is the start of a new series on the deities of the Forgotten Realms. My plan is to go through the Forgotten Realms pantheon, hitting as many deities as it takes to make a six to seven minute long video. Some deities obviously have some more history and story than the others, so it will be up in the air how long each video is. I hope you find it fun though, so let's dive in. The first god I'd like to talk about is Amounator. He is an older god of the Netherese Empire, the deity of Sun and Law. He was a very popular and very powerful deity, however, when the Netherese Empire fell, click the link to find out what happened to the Netherese, Amounator lost his followers and became very weak. A deity without worshippers has no power, which I've always found interesting that deities get their power from their worshippers, and then their worshippers in turn get magical powers from their deity. There were a few worshippers left after the fall of the Netherese Empire, but most of them abandoned Amounator because they believed he could have prevented the disaster but did nothing. This was not true, as Amounator was not allowed to interfere with another deity's domain, in this case Mistral and her domain of magic. It's kind of poetic that just how the sun sets, so did Amounator. He shone brightly for many centuries, but just like a setting sun, he faded away. However, he did not disappear entirely. Amounator came back to the Faerun Pantheon as another greater deity, Lathander. We'll talk about him in a later video, but Lathander is the god of the dawn, and although a separate being, he is an aspect of Amounator. It was in 1385, just after the Spell Plague, that Lathander revealed himself to be Amounator. So this is weird, but both Lathander and Amounator are in the Sword Coast Adventures Guide as separate deities. I mean, one is the god of the sun and the other is the god of the dawn, but they still are more or less the same guy. I'm not sure if he's really split in two or if you can just worship him under either name. It's interesting. And we'll have more on Lathander later. People send prayers to Amounator when making contracts. Much of his clergy serve as judges in the courtroom. They can also present cases and hear legal arguments and disputes. Up next is Asmodeus. I made a video on the Nine Hells and spoke about Asmodeus a bit there. You can find a video in the link in the upper right corner of the screen. This will be a more in-depth recap, I hope. According to some 3.5 material, Asmodeus began as a servant of the lawful gods, described in some versions of the myth as an angel. He was created along with other beings to fight the demons of the abyss. It was an effort by the gods to keep the demons at bay so they could focus on more important things. Eons of fighting the creatures of the abyss took its toll on Asmodeus and his armies. For one, they could never seem to win. No matter how many demons they destroyed, a new one would always take its place. The war was eternal. Secondly, the abyss seemed to change Asmodeus and his army. They grew similar in appearance and methods to the demons which they fought. The gods did not like this change and put Asmodeus on trial, demanding him to be cast out of the upper plains. But he argued correctly that Asmodeus and his followers had not violated any law and should be allowed to stay in the upper plains. Flash forward and the gods create sentient life on Torail. They create mountains, oceans, and wastelands to seal up the gates to the abyss, but their creations defied their orders and explored the world, accidentally opening these sealed gates to the abyss. The gods did not quite understand why their creations would not listen to them, but Asmodeus knew there were no consequences. Thus, Asmodeus invented the concept of punishment. Unruly souls were punished in the Upper Plains by Asmodeus and his kin. The gods did not like having this so close, though. Asmodeus could not take the punishments away from the Upper Plains because he needed the divine magic granted to him by the gods. The gods did not want him to stay, but also feared making him a deity, which would give him the power to take his punishment ring elsewhere. So Asmodeus created a contract called the Pact Primeval. This allowed Asmodeus and his fellow devils to take up residence in the abandoned realm of Bator, aka the Nine Hells. It is here that they would punish the souls of wicked mortals, but also have the ability to extract magical energy from their souls to fuel their powers. This seemed like a win-win. The gods would be rid of Asmodeus, and he would be able to fulfill the consequences of people not listening to the gods. What the gods did not see is that the devils would be tempting mortals away from them. Because the more souls they could bring to the Nine Hells, the more power the devils had. The deities saw fewer and fewer souls go to the realms after death only to find Asmodeus the root cause. A lot of this is 4th edition mythology. Earlier books talk of Asmodeus as a primal force of evil in the D&D universe. Apparently in the Manual of the Plains, Asmodeus' true form is that of a giant serpent, and he was cast out of the Upper Plains before the creation of the current gods? Question mark? I couldn't find much information on this. The demon lord Pazuzu aided Asmodeus by getting him a small piece of the shard of evil which resides in the heart of the abyss. Pazuzu was a demon that predated the abyss. He was an Oberith that manipulated the god Tharsden. In 4th edition lore, he was the one responsible for corrupting Asmodeus, 
with that small piece of the shard of evil, Asmodeus took the piece and crafted his ruby rod out of it. In some mythology, Asmodeus is a deity already, but in 4th edition during the Spell Plague, the deity Azuth was thrown into the Nine Hells where Asmodeus devoured him, or fused with him rather. Both beings coexisted in the same body, but Asmodeus overpowered Azuth and gained his divinity. It wasn't until the Sundering that the two separated. Asmodeus agreed to release Azuth to help in the resurrection of an Untherite god named Nana Sin as a non-god immortal. They were going to bring back this god, but as a non-god, just a mortal being on Faerun. Now the Unther was an old empire tribe brought to Faerun by the Amaskar Empire as slaves. When they came, they brought their gods with them, much like the Malharandi pantheon. Asmodeus consumed Nanasin's divine spark and became a true god unto himself. Nanasin was originally killed in negative 1071 DR, but brought back in 1487. His divine spark given to Asmodeus, Nanasin took the form of a giant dragon turtle. Asmodeus is kind of complicated. I hope this is more clarifying than confusing, but even as I'm going through this, I see the contradictions. I think the real answer here is that Wizards of the Coast wanted Asmodeus to be a deity, so they used some old deity nobody would miss to allow him to have a divine spark. And that's it for the first installment of the gods. If you want more info on Asmodeus, I have a video on the Nine Hells, as well as some of my earlier videos on the Shard of Evil and the Abyss. Links in the doobly-doo. And thanks for watching, everyone. Give a like to support the channel, and I will all see you all next Wednesday.